Hi, everybody, and welcome to the RHAP BNB for episode six of Survivor 46. My name is Mike Bloom, 5'10, for those of you that are wondering, and I am here breaking down mergatory of this season as we'll talk about the Mo and MO, I should say, of all 13 players as we move both from the last stage of the game and kind of into the next one in this weird kind of literal purgatorial state where anything goes except it will almost always feature some woman that's kind of on the bottom of one of the big alliances getting voted out. But we have a lot of stuff to break down as finally these three tribes are meeting. And I'm so excited to bring this person back to the podcast after a one week yadis. She is back taking her spot as the co-owner of the BNB. I definitely will not be asking you, are you new, Liana Boris? <laughs> I Dirk Bean knew though. Uh so yeah, look, I am so so happy to be back. Obviously, thank you to the mess magnets and you, Mike, for holding down the fort last week. It was so fun. The swapping the faces game is always a blast. I immediately had to jump to YouTube to see what crazy creations were made. So thank you for that. But let's get into it. It's my favorite time of a survivor season seeing everybody come together the new dynamics the new relationships how are things going to play out with the i guess i was going to say merge tribe i'm still not used to this murgatory thing or whatever but look they're together they're hanging out some of them are eating some of them are not and we're going to talk through all of it well we'll certainly be eating today with our guest and i would call him my favorite survivor player parentheses who streams blood on the clock tower and goose goose duck weekly so excited to welcome back to the b and beach why more yeah thank you for having me i'm excited to talk about this episode again you know you know we're slightly triggering the emergency is a chaotic time uh but no i'm super excited to talk about this this is a uh, very it's honestly so chaotic the, those two days of emergency so that to have this extra 30 minutes to show on air is to give it such more breathing room and i'm excited to you know discuss what happened um, yeah so Dwight, the last time you were on RHAP was obviously under different guises. You were uh, the inaugural member, I believe, of the new version of Twitch, like 3.0, 4.0 at this point. So a lot has happened from the days of Jelinski to him coming around again with the title ap uh, ep episode several, I believe, is going to be. I, next is that day. the official? Has that been? Is that the official? Because I know it might be a placeholder. That's the official title. I believe that's the official title is episode several. I love that. I want to know who said. If, I wonder if it's even said or just. Yeah. Yeah, like, said, we're just putting is, this in there. Is someone sitting on a tree, not only notching in the days, but also counting the episode cycles, being like, okay, this will air on April 3rd, 2024. I mean, like, it's not hard to track the episodes. Like, you, we, like it's new era. Some fan can realize, like, literally when I was out there, I did the same thing. I was like, oh, this is probably just episode five, six, because you know the boot order. You know what's going to mm -hmm. be, like, it, it, it makes, I could see someone saying it. I just, who would say it, actually? I would say Mo, but now, you know um who else would say that well i'm trying to think of who made the jokes about several after jelinski was voted out it was, it charlie, was charlie and hunter right the well, hunter hunter did the last name first out yeah. okay but charlie did the call back to several so he's top of my list if mm. if it is actually said or if this is just a the editors were like Having we fun. have to do this uh, i hope i really hope it's the latter there's just let's just have fun with this and do can I, have you done an episode title not in, said in such a long time right When's the last time he did that? Uh, yeah, I don't know, it's, Mike. It's been a long time, yeah, yeah, that we haven't had, like, a direct quote. And it sort of has, unfortunately, cut in some bad directions where we've gotten, like, how many titles of, oh, Survivor's a steering wheel or, you know, blindsides are yummy. Just, like, <laughs> basically Mad Libs find and replace. I can't really think of the last time. I mean, we've certainly had Jeff quotes be used which i guess is sort of yeah. the halfway point but we haven't had actual like well nobody really said anything of value so let's throw episode several in there i can tell you three people that wouldn't call it episode several and it would be those three people that were standing next to jelinski on the purple mat when he said it's seven of me several you don't <laughs> think to would say that, that? <laughs> you, I, you know what q's on my top of my list now episode several comes from q surely <laughs> Because he got the, what was the the one about the wackadoos win or whatever? Yeah, so he got wackadoos win. He yeah. did get this past week as well with, and listen, we're going to get into a lot of Q stuff. Uh, I think I've sort of come to my own conclusion that Q low-key might be one of my favorite characters this season. We'll get into it, but I okay. love just how incredibly intense he can be in all emotional directions, including in this episode when he's like, you know, if Mariah thinks she can try to you know, screw me over, she'll have to cancel Christmas, which I don't know if that's a Southern aphorism, but I don't understand the logic in it. I 
haven't heard that one before. Maybe I just, I don't know. That one's just new to me. I'm just like, uh, sure, cool. <laughs> I mean, but I, I, I guess my parents may have heard that because maybe it's just like an age thing. He's like, you're not that much mm. older. I don't know. I haven't heard it. Mm-hmm. Um, I am. I'm also excited to talk about Q. Okay, well, what what are we doing? What are we doing here, Mike? What well, do we talk about first? When can I talk about Q? Because I also have this Q is well, thoughts. this is uh, this is mergatory, so anything goes, as yes. we said. But we will ultimately settle on a couple of conclusions. I mean, Liana, you talk about this being a highly anticipated event, even though it is a little bit of like a half cocked mm-hmm. measure of we're not even technically merged yet. People get their buffs halfway through the episode, and then it's only half the cast. Hell, even next episode is doesn't really feel like a merge either, because we're basically going back into True Tribe for that episode. But how did this measure up for you? Because certainly the pre-merge narrative, with the exception of last week, was really all about Yanu. Now Nami finally gets to vote. We'll see if the Seagulls remain this unified front after the gem blind side. Mm -hmm. How did this measure up to you? (sighs) I did feel, okay, so obviously I'm very excited about it. But I almost still felt like more, 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 more. Like the offhanded comment. Mo, mo, mo. Mo, 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 baby. Like the fact that Hunter makes a comment about, oh, Soda hates Liz or Liz hates Soda and Soda hates Venus. I'm like, where? Like, <laughs> tell me more. Well, we, we, so we saw Soda hates Venus Ooh. during that time that Hunter happened to be digging for the key. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that too. This was like that the blue balls was... episode because it was like, okay, sorry. I'm really excited about this because I wanted more of that conversation. I was like, I don't care about the idol. Go back to the conversation. Like, I want to see what's happening. And okay, Hunter's going to find it. It's going to be fine. But this conversation, I really, really wanted to see. So the fact we didn't get that, oh, yeah, that was a little frustrated. But at least we got some, some initial inklings. I think the way that especially Sega conducted themselves as a group was very interesting to see like, okay, we're going to present this unified front. Why? (laughs) Like, why would you present a unified front? Like, doesn't that just make you guys the bigger target? So that was a very weird decision. Then Mo throwing out all of a sudden that tribal issue was on the bottom was all very interesting. And a lot of sort of, in my opinion, like questionable, but very interesting decisions. Yeah, Dwight, obviously you are someone that has gone through the mergatory process. We'll certainly compare and contrast a lot. Was this behavior expected on your part, considering that you yourself have been in this situation from the standpoint of the Seagas? Um, It's intriguing. So when we hit mergatory in our season, it was, we had pretty even numbers, four, four, and five on the tribes. Theirs had what, three, four, five? Five and five. Five, five, five. five. Yeah, so I think Seagas' plan there might have just been less... Let's look unified and try and get Yanu to us to take out Nami. The issue being, Nami, also in Tribe 5, was just fractured on their face. And if you're, like, Yanu is going to be a tight three coming into it, no matter what. You know, they've survived. They've gone through hell together. So they're Mm going to be very tight. So from Yanu's perspective, I don't think they anticipated that. They probably expect they're going to come with us to tight five and work together. But long term, that makes no sense for Yanu. Because then, once they're all gone, it's then 5v3. So I think they, they did not think... I think long term enough for what is this group of three going to do? They're going to go with the fractured five or the solid five that's going to ride together till the end. And unfortunately, I think they just misplayed that as a group, like strategy wise. Of course, you want to go into the merge telling your tribe, let's act like we're going to work together because you don't want anyone to say your name. So I think amongst themselves, they probably said, let's just not say their name out there. But then they stuck to it a bit too long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, I do think from an episodic perspective, listen, the narrative was fairly straightforward. And, and we can get into that about how, ironically, the openness of mergatory kind of handcuffs the player sometimes to be like, all right, well, there's only a couple of options we're ultimately going to decide between because the name of the game is to just survive and make it to an actual stable stage. But I did think, looking back, it was an interestingly seeded storyline over the course of the episode as to leading to this ultimate outcome of okay, the Yanus are going to side with Nami to take out the more unified Seagas. And to look at some of the rigmarole that took place before the Mergatory Challenge, things like, for example, Venus and Tevin already throwing each other under the bus, where Venus starts telling Tiffany openly, like, you cannot go to the final three with Tevin or he'll win. They tell that to Tevin, and Tevin's like, "Mm -mm -mm, I told you that girl was no good since the beginning. Compare that to Q with this big idea for this cross-tribal alliance, approaches Tim, and Tim's like, oh, yeah, I'll get to it tomorrow. Don't worry about it. Like the the I, I get Tim's logic of, you know, you don't want to be too open about it, especially during this day purgatorial period where you don't know what the teams are going to shake out. You don't want to necessarily throw a target out there unless you can hit it. But the way that I think it came across to Q was like, oh, okay, this is clearly not a preference of yours. Your preference is the Seagas 
over any type of breaking from the norm that you would want. And so it was this, I don't think it should be a hard and fast rule of like, if you go into a merge situation, you should always present yourself as fractured, even if you're pretending to do so. Rob brought this up. I think the example of 42, where Marianne was clearly on the outs of the Takus, but like they presented as a unified front as opposed to, hey, we're fine throwing Lydia under the bus. It doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, those numbers were a little bit different, but I think it really depends on the people you're playing with and what the opposition was doing. In this 100%. case, the people that you're playing with, the Yanus were looking to glom onto something, and as much as maybe the reliability of the Seagas would help in the short term, it's clear they didn't want to be three in an eight-person alliance. And then two, looking at Nami, they're presenting themselves as this very appealing option, as like, hey, if we stick with them, we could very clearly just take people onto our side. Hell, Tevin and Hunter seem like they're ready to jump to us ASAP. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think that it's not, it's not about, okay, Yes, there's a binary unified front, non-unified front. You can look at it that way. But it's obviously much more nuanced that, okay, sure, you can come across like somewhat of a unified front, but there have to be some cracks. And it felt like Sega was giving nothing to anybody else. It was yeah. just like, nope, mm -mm, like, yeah. nope. Vote mm -mm. unanimously. No yeah. problems here. We love each other. We're five block. I'm just like, yes, great and all, but you're saying we're five block and a 13 person group like that's not gonna fly for and, long and, and compare that to again nami who has never been to tribal council they get asked where are the cracks and they oh, and pull up the carpet Laundry goes, list. yeah <laughs> all the foundational uh you know mistakes within it and saying like yeah we're barely surviving at this point compared to ben and tim are asked at the feast hey what's going on with sega and they're still like yeah, I know it's been half the game and we just went to Tribal Council, but really nothing on our ends. I, <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of thoughts on how the feast went when we get there. Oh my gosh. Well, and that's the thing also with Tim specifically, because so all of Sega is kind of presenting this unified front. And Ben is interesting because, you know, Ben had that secret scene. Remember where he just like didn't want to talk at all yeah. about like things so that maybe I was just like, it was like a Ben thing. I, I, but, I do without, uh you know, characterizing him too much. I do kind of believe that's the case that I don't think this yeah. is necessarily really the guy you're going to for intense strategy i think he's the vibes guy he's vibes this rocks this doesn't rock right okay like we're playing some jazz whatever so where is tim like tim has had a conversation with hunter and q being like bruh like the boys we're doing this you know like we're coming up with the brigade strategy so then for tim to turn around in the group and even in one-on-one -on -one conversations with q just still be like nah <laughs> like yeah i haven't gotten to it yet like clearly it's not a top priority so again you're still giving like even if you again Sega comes across a unified front but then tim is go on girl give us nothing if you're q right so it's yeah it, it just felt like there's there why why would anybody want to work with Sega after that right I, I think that getting to that point of ben like about the tim hunter q cross tribal alliance the main thing about the cross tribal alliance is need to be willing to sacrifice people from your tribe if you're just putting up a wall saying okay let's do this cross tribal thing let's let's take out a yanu then let's take out a nami then the yanu again let's leave the seekers alone like you're making yeah. it very obvious that you just want to have options for yourself instead of saying like even just putting out there like okay you could take out someone from our tribe is fine even if you don't really mean it you will warn them later just verbally present to them it's okay like leave your options open but you gotta be more subtle in how you manipulate how the numbers mm -hmm. are going i and mean on that note, uh, because what you're suggesting, Dwight, is basically, for lack of a better term, a name for a name. And that brings us to, I think, one of the bigger characters of the episode. Uh, someone who was at least personified up until the Tribal Council as someone that was certainly in the line of fire. I think someone that people were predicting might have been our mergatory boot. Luckily, she does survive here. Venus! Uh, because there's been a lot of talk about you know, was she doing the right thing? Did she have the right amount of tact, especially with this seemingly last minute plan to say, oh, Mariah's going, hell no, we got to get some of these penises out of here. So let's get Charlie off. I mean, again, that's, she gave some reasoning on social media, but she explicitly said in the episode, right? Like we got to get rid of a man and Charlie's the only man that is vulnerable at this point, even though again, everyone sort of has their own inclinations outside of that. Liana, give me your thoughts on all things Venus in this episode. Well, what I loved about Venus is choice to essentially say, like, why Mo, right? She's not a threat. She can't jump. Like, why bother? So instead, like, let's go for a bigger target is a great read. Like, that's a great take. Like, why would you not do that? 
I think it's the way that she presents the ideas and the way that she presents herself. And we've seen this sort of throughout, like you guys talked about it last week with the conversation with Hunter, where it's like, why would I get rid of you? You're my meat shield or whatever, like very explicit thing she said. It was like, those are the inside thoughts. Those don't come out. Those stay inside. And this was also one of those moments. It was like, okay, maybe don't say the penis thing out loud. Like just that stays on the inside. Like we don't uh, say the outside. Story of my life. That should go on my <laughs> gravestone. Maybe don't say the penis thing. <laughs> penis thing out loud full bloom okay so yeah so you know i think again right like intuition right intuition right idea poorly executed yeah i think venus is a she has the right ideas on like right ideas but the delivery i think when she hit the merge beach hard like she knew she was on the bottom of nami let's be clear like they made it very obvious Mm -hmm. hits the ground running starts strategizing with every living breathing individual on the merge beach which Great idea, except when you hit the merge, people are just, it's like the start of the game again. You just want to survive. You don't yeah. want to stand out too much. You don't want to stand out too little. You don't want to be obviously scheming. You don't want to be obviously just doing nothing. You just want to do a little bit, you know, set your game up. And she was setting her game up with everyone, which when people start talking, you realize, oh, who have you talked to? And if the name, like, oh, who have you talked to a bit? And if you hear Venus from every single living person, you're going to be like, oh, she wasn't she meeting with me. She was just trying to give me and like everybody else, you know, like people compare notes. People are going to go to their mm-hmm. tribe or your allies be like, who have you talked to? And if you hear the same name over and over again from literally everyone, it's going to be a bit of a red flag because you're thinking, oh, they're gaming hard. You hear it every season. Someone's like, oh, they're gaming too hard on at the start of the game. You know, They're gaming too hard on day one. This is basically day one again. And you got to figure out what, you got to be subtle about it if you're going to do something like that, try and hit everyone up. And like, you can say you're on the bottom, um, but I'm not sure if like the delivery, like I'm on the bottom, but let, hey, let's just like, Telling every single person, uh, like also like let's get out of me or like your reasoning or whatever. It's 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 a bit it's the delivery may have been wrong. But one thing I will say about Venus as well is in terms of like working with Venus, like she like her inside thoughts do not stay inside. They they break out of the house. Um, but I personally I think that's not the worst thing to have in an ally because like they're not yeah. gonna. It's gonna be hard for them to blindside you when they're just a, a tactful, truthful person. You're just like oh like. When, when their behavior switches up, you'll know when they're trying to lie to your blind side. Like, that's someone who I feel like their behavior is so, like, loud and, you know, forthcoming. Uh, and a change in that is going to be very predictable. Mm-hmm. So I think that's someone, for me personally, that's not the worst thing in the world to work with. Yeah. But unfortunately, she managed to um, become a target for literally everyone in the tribe, which is a mergatory. People will jump on the target. And if as long as it's not them go for it keep keep mm-hmm. keep doing too much keep doing it and don't let, let that name get, put itself out there yeah i completely agree and i think tiffany actually espouses this in the episode right of like well if it's a difference between the shysty one and the quote-unquote knowledgeable one which maybe we'll get into a bit of stigmatizing against uh poor uh, mariah who maybe had a bit of an astigmatism in her eye if you saw over the course of a couple of confessionals um but you know the shystiness of somebody is much more clockable and visible than for lack of a better term, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. And even though Tiffany doesn't really know Venus or Mariah at this point, it's something that is much more visible and something that can easily get taken care of. Because yes, there might be people that will decide, including Tiffany herself, oh yeah, Venus is not getting votes in the end. Clearly from even an interpersonal social perspective, she's ticking people off. And so that's someone that we can easily bring along with us. It's someone that, yeah, to your point, if she is up to something, she is going to make it abundantly clear. She's going to set off some fireworks spelling out in the sky, this is my plan, as opposed to maybe what they're perceiving Mariah as, which is like, okay, maybe she is someone that that appears to be, you know, not the hugest threat, but like, she knows the show. We know how this, uh, you know, metagame of the new era runs sometimes. We're like, these are the people you need to watch out for. I I just love Venus so much. As a, It's been said so much this past week, but like, I feel like she is such a unique character in the new era. Uh, She really does feel like a modern day Courtney Yates who doesn't have that Todd and Amanda alongside her to kind of like keep her in the inner circle because she is somebody that is consistently like trying to simultaneously like grab at olive branches, but also break them at the same time by being like, Oh, you don't want to do this. Uh, Screw you. I don't even want to be with you anyway. Uh, Even like the clearly joking thing she says of, you know, uh, there's a secret scene where the losers are back at camp being like, 
oh, I wonder when they'll come back. And Venus is like, I hope they never come back. Uh, like clearly meant in jest, but the way that she delivers it is so good. And yeah, that openness is, mwah, that the is the secret is... A secret sauce of a reality TV contestant. It's so crazy because, like, I remember her pregame press. She's like, "I want to play like, like sneaky." I'm just like, "You're not sneaky. You're playing with a sledgehammer. Stop it!" Like, yeah, where where's the sneakiness in your game? You're just outright saying to someone, "You're my meat shield." I'm just like, "Stop!" Well, I, I <laughs> please, but I think it's this idea that we kind of saw with Jem last week of a lot of these people, due to the circumstances of Yanu sitting on their hands for mm. a good portion of the game, like. Venus is somebody, if you chart the course of the pre-merge, she started off like in a relatively okay position, as she'll talk about with Soda in their brief argument. You know, they started off in an, in an okay spot. She felt like, yes, she was maybe coming across as a bit too standoffish, but she was trying to worm her way in there. And then it hit a point with her where she's like, enough is enough. They're not giving me the time of day, so I'm not going to give them the time of day. And so, yeah, when they got to the merge and she saw eight new faces, she's like, fantastic eight new friends in a manner of speaking. We talk about social capital all the time. Venus is somebody who has been really making like pennies in terms of a social paycheck, then gets a bonus at Christmas and is like, great, I'm buying a house. It's like, I don't think that's where you should be putting your money. <laughs> yeah, you might want to save that, pocket that for a rainy day. Yeah, I'm really curious to see like what the path forward is going to look like for her because I almost feel like one of two options. She's going to get voted out. Okay, great. Consensus vote. Goodbye. Or it's like she just sort of exists in her own kind of little reality where like no one's really playing with her and she's just kind of like throwing out suggestions and like wanting to direct things. But everybody's just kind of like, no, why would we do that? I don't know. Like, I'm just thinking, like, how does she integrate into a group and then work with that group. Like, I just, I'm curious to know if that is even an option for her. Considering that she showed a big lesson when she was given a name and was basically told this ultimatum, right? Of like, it's her or you, so go with this name. She responded with, okay, great suggestion, no. And so what does that present to other people that want to work with her of like, okay, it's going to be your way or the highway, and you're barely building a highway at this point. Exactly. <laughs> That honestly, like, I don't hate the trying to make a move there. Like, it, like you can't just lo sit down at the like. I will say my kind of regret at Mergatory myself is letting Ellie go through. I mm -hmm. didn't want Ellie to go, but I was like, okay, listen, everyone's still on this, kind of follow it. And I was like, a, I, I was safe in that regard. So I respect Venus a lot for you know, even her name's on the top block, being like, I don't like this move. I want to make something else happen. Um, so like, like I said, I. While it's like maybe not the ideal thing, I respect it a lot because that's part my, one of my like major regrets is letting you know Ellie vote go through there, not doing more to change that. So mm -hmm. I, I I I massive respect her trying to you know change the vote yeah. up a bit, especially when they say your name is out there on the line and someone says, yeah, it's gonna be you or her. It's like option C, Charlie, <laughs> the man, get him. Yeah, uh, well, and listen, I I love it as well, considering that we talk about this, like the meta of mergatory, as I mentioned so cheekily in the beginning has kind of just become, all right, is there someone that nobody will kind of go to bat for, you mm -hmm. know, and your example, Dwight, it's something like Gabler clearly comes in with an agenda into the merge feast. And there wasn't really Janine probably being, and maybe Owen a bit being the sole exceptions of anyone that's like willing to step up and defend them. It's an easy option for everybody. It's not necessarily causing bad blood. And We've kind of seen this, even something like last season, uh, you know, that nearly happened to Caleb, where much like Gabler, Bruce comes in with this sledgehammer agenda of, nope, Caleb's going to be the one to go. And they're like, great, okay, it's not my name? Sure, I'll route down Caleb. I don't know him from a hole in the wall. And so, you know, it, it does sort of make sense with the meta that we, we end up kind of nearly expending someone that I'm kind of surprised the Namis go to bat for at the end of the day. And I do wonder in retrospect, if this will be the right move for them to make, considering that Mo at least expressed in her exit press that like she was not going to stay Stiga strong. And clearly in their case, it was once again, Liana, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think also there's so much information you're trying to process. All I mean, I can imagine being in that situation of like taking in all this information. And like Dwight said, it's very much a like, okay, 
like, I don't even know what's best for me. I just don't want me to go. So let me try to very quickly on very little foods, synthesize all this information and then make a decision moving forward. And so I think that that is, I can't even imagine how overwhelming that would be. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see ultimately how it plays out. Cause obviously now it's looking like, well, the Seagas are on the outs. Maybe Tim feels like a little bit screwed uh, with his like, no, he has his BFF Maria. Oh, don't worry. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. When Maria was like, he's not even my number three. I was like, wait, there's five people on the tribe four not including Maria. If he's not even your number three. What does I mean, that I mean, mean? I think she said she, she is not. I think she, yeah, she, 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 she said three, three at best. Yeah. Three, three, three at best. Okay, three. Okay, so three at best, which means there's only one other person <laughs> below him. Like, that's brutal. Yeah, that's, she was like, I don't even know him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's wild. Well, I want to get back to the queue at hand. Yes. Because we have so much fun to talk about with this man. Because I would say... Again, I think the prevailing mergatory strategy is kind of doing what Tim did with maybe a bit of better tact, which is like, hey, kind of suss out what the names might be. Wait until you see if that person's actually going to be safe, which there's a 50-50 chance of doing. And then you can really go in and, you know, make your target known, something that I kind of have a gripe about that we'll get to in a bit. But here comes Q, and Q is saying, oh, great, a complicated vote for the first time in my survivor career. Fantastic. This cast iron skill is going to cook baby and here he comes basically from our perspective kind of determining that the vote goes specifically on mariah despite the fact that there were three segas that were up for elimination uh going back to the china comparisons i've seen actually q get compared to james clement a bit in the past week which i i kind of see i think q is low-key funny i think james is more high-key funny uh in that like both the cases there are these big buff guys from the south that have like these big imposing physiques and like kind of imposing personalities as well but even cheekier moments like q beaming a mile wide last week and being like i think that's a great plan uh like one of the rare times we saw him smiling or even this week when he gets so mad at venus that he threatens to deport her back to canada i this man is absolutely wild and i love that now he feels like okay i've survived through hell so i will be the angel to slay everyone <laughs> Well, I mean, we saw inclinations of this, right? With like, why does my path have to be the hardest? Like, we've seen yeah. this, you know? Like, these little elements. He's such a character. Like, I'm thinking back to the whole Banu thing. If he just tells Banu, yeah, you're my Philip. I'm just like, what are you or, saying? Or when he says like, all right, I'm going to be Jeff and you're going to be you. And then they do it and it goes, all right, so you're coming in too strong right now. Like, the with Q, and I say this with so much love, Almost everything he does, I say, the pure audacity of this man. <laughs> yes. But again, like Venus, this is what you need in a reality TV contestant. It's it's so, I'm just genuinely, it's like, I, I'm trying to figure out how could I, these people are just so out there. I was like, how would I have worked with them on my season? I'm just thinking like, if I was on the season, what the hell would have happened? It's insane. This this cast is so well made together. They, I'm glad like they're all on the same season together because it's just so funny to watch of like what is going on in this like little world that they have going on. This, the casting team just said, yeah, they're just gonna okay these no just put them all together. Just put, yeah. try to put one or two outside yeah. like no put all like the outside crazy people together on one season. See how see what happens. Let it play out. It's so yeah. good. We're experimenting in the new era. Like let's Honestly, just keep go doing for this. it. Yeah, oh, I I just love how quick Q is to just declare something. Like when he hears about uh, Venus not being happy about the Mariah vote, he says, "I ain't talking to Venus no more." Damn Venus! <laughs> <laughs> Met her twelve hours ago, dude. <laughs> <laughs> or like, yeah, like the second that Mariah's like, oh yeah, you know, I like Aubrey. Aubrey. Gotta go. <laughs> the crime of being a nerdy woman. Get get out of my game now. Like, it's not even like this is who I'm playing. Like, it's just like this is my favorite player. I like, like I can say yeah. my favorite player is Tony and play nothing like nope. Tony. No, that, that's a crime. Then, Sorry, you can't that's, say that's, that. Yeah, exactly. the, the implication is like to Q, okay, this is your favorite player. You're going to play exactly like them. I mean, also, I guess the, the question Aubrey is lost is, is, three times? So also just like <laughs> Yeah. Okay. No, is Q an Aubrey Truther? Was he back in on there in 2016 being like <laughs> oh my God. Stop, stop now, stop now, stop this. <laughs> You're gonna get a season to sit. You're gonna get a season. I, I listen, there's much worse social media activity that the 46 cast has done as of late, so but this is mild by comparison. <laughs> <laughs> 
Who is who did Q list as his favorite player? So what's interesting, Jeremy? Is Mar- yeah, Mariah told me that in the chat that they were having, this was a two way street because. <laughs> And what I love about this as well is, again, the bluntness of this cast. It's like a dull machete throughout these past 13 days where the way it's shown is that Mariah's like, yeah, that's the tough thing about this game. It's like a big whiteboard. There's so many possibilities. And Q interrupts her. So who's your, how long you been watching? Give me your history. <laughs> <laughs> like it's the worst job interview ever. And yeah, apparently Mariah said Aubrey and Q did in turn respond and said Jeremy Collins. But he decides in that moment, like, listen, it's okay for me. It's not okay for you. I've watched Co Wrong. I maybe not the other two seasons. I know how much of a player Aubrey can be. So so sorry, you gotta go. It listen, the, the hypocrisy sometimes just needs to be used to put a target on someone. Mm-hmm. So just like, yeah, how dare you like a strong player? Get out of here. Meanwhile, like he's definitely studied strong players and winners of how to play the game. But listen, anything it takes to put a name out there during Mergatory, whatever. Maybe he just wanted Mariah out and just found a reason to do it. Maybe the conversation was for. Who really knows? But I I have a hard time believing that that is the sole reason he wanted to target Mariah. I think that was just mm. something to latch onto and spread throughout the tribe as some kind of, like, rumor. And also, like, let's be real. There's probably other Aubrey fans on the damn season being like, damn, that's crazy. Anyways, get her. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's the question that I think Austin ended up asking on Twitter on Wednesday night. Is there, like, a perfect player that serves as a middle ground for you to answer this question without having the cues of the world perk up their ears and say, ah, okay, that means you're next to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of people were like, the initial inclination is, oh, you go for like the Zane Knights, the Philip Shepherds, you know, the ones like that. I think, I think, no, I think you need someone that you're just like, who? Yeah. (laughs) I think you make up a player. Ooh, okay. Because here's the thing. We saw last episode, people certainly watch all the seasons, but the the retention for it is not necessarily 100%, nor does it need to be. Could you be like, oh yeah, Mark Havermeyer, eighth place from season 38, that is my go-to guy. What he did with that idol, oh, one of the best moments in Survivor history. Just, just uh, like outline those generalities without going into specifics. The issue is there's so many super fans cast nowadays, someone be like, who the like they, someone out there probably knows the entire history of every single fiber cut that would like clock you immediately be like he's just lying you know or someone out there is gonna know could you use an international contestant then that will put no that's even worse because <laughs> that's like oh they know international survivor yeah. like oh, own and i huge own and i talk survivor au on the island i don't think that helped my case yeah, you're like, oh my God, yeah that was a uh, get him out <laughs> so yeah don't do that don't do that one. Oh yeah like maybe don't wear a jonathan uh t-shirt <laughs> yeah imagine island. imagine if they approved your wardrobe to go out there with a jonathan lapalia t-shirt <laughs> Oh, yeah. That shit gets taken out during pregame. They're oh, like, no, get no. this out of here. No, 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 no. Here's how you bypass it. And this is future Survivor contestants. This is what you do. Liana, yes. you, you say that's your husband. Oh. Remember how Aaron from Island of the Idols had his kid on his socks? I feel like yes. you get a loophole by saying this is your family. So you don't right? think anybody's going to fact check this? Yeah, I think that's an issue. Like, just want, Yeah, just put the face on the socks. Don't put a name. Just like, yeah, okay, make, so have, just... make someone recognize that's actually John. Yeah. Okay. That, that's yeah. the play. Someone in 47, okay. do that, please. I, I want to see yeah. it happen. Yeah, exactly. Then, like, you sneak in somebody, as long as they're not, like, with no offense to Jonathan, like, an incredibly wreck. You can't put, like, Tom Cruise on your shirt and be like, oh, this is my uncle. Because, uh, <laughs> first of all, then they call you a Nepo baby. Maybe they wouldn't be able to bring you on the show in the first Second, place. Go to claim the fame, not survive. Yeah, exactly. Like, wrong show. <laughs> uh, okay, great. So, we've got that plan. <laughs> Love that. Um, yeah, I would just cover that up. All right. So my thing about Q, so I've been thinking about this. So if you're on the internet, you may have seen people being like, oh my God, Hunter, let's thirst over Hunter. Okay. Have we seen this? No, just me. Oh yeah. No, no, no. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, no, it's, okay. yeah. It's, okay. Yeah. I think Q is hotter. Okay. Ooh. I think there's the one, the challenge with Q and his underwear when he's like swimming in the water and releasing the ball and stuff. And he like jumps up on the platform thing. I think he's hotter. I think he's unintentionally funny, which is very entertaining to me. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously Kenzie is my crush of the season, but if I had to pick a second, I think it would be Q. 
Yeah, I, I I could see that. Like, I think his body, he has one of the most, like, so again, good. going back to James Clement, like, one of the most, like, aesthetically beautiful bodies that I think I'm we've seen. I'm going to ask him for workout advice after the season. Like, yeah. guys, <laughs> tell me what to do. What the fuck? But that's the other thing that's interesting as well is it's that confidence. And I think Hunter Shrub has that quiet confidence of, like, mm. I could probably do that, but I don't need to advertise that at the moment. I mean, look at Tribal Council, where that's the other thing about Q is that, like, he's consistently in coach mode. That's just who he is as a person. So even at tribal council, when he's like admonishing Mariah for being like, why did you not tell me you were on the bottom? And then he says, you have to realize, are you playing for Sega or are you playing for you? Like he can't help, but throw a little bit of a nugget of wisdom in there towards right. the end of him bringing someone down. He said, Jeff, I got this. Sit this one out. I got the questions today. You yeah. take a day off. <laughs> Yeah, I can handle that. Yeah, and look, will that eventually rub me the wrong way? Yes. And will I be annoyed with him? Yes. But he's nice to look at, so I appreciate that. Yeah, and I think he just, he has so many moods as well. Like, it was really fun. And I think, we talked about this all the way back in, like, the second week, Liana. I do think he had probably an underrated amount of control on that Yanu tribe. I mean, if he's to believe, it seemed like he was ready to pull the trigger on that Kenzie blind side had Randon's medevac mm -hmm. not happened. But I also love that he kind of feels like a kid in a candy store here of like, oh, great. I don't have to, you know, strategize with these goons over here. Now there's this whole other group of people. And you could tell how freaking jazzed he is by this plus one alliance as well, considering that he basically bypassed any sort of small talk. We see that scene where everyone's just kind of sharing stories and he's just like, and he says, I'm going to get up and just check in with all my cross tribal members. These are the people that I want to be with. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. intrigued on how his social game is because he just obviously is not partaking in like the let's all like talk about ourselves. And it's right. like, is he trying to integrate himself socially at all, or he's just like only game mode? I'm so intrigued to see how this plays out, like for, for like while he's while he's here. Well, yeah. I think the big in that I'm honestly surprised has not been acknowledged yet is the Mississippi connection is here. This was something that these two guys clocked each other in the preseason. I had a feeling that just due to the physicality of the pre-merge, they both make it there and. Now it's official, and I think these two guys like have to be in lockstep for the next portion of the game, which I think is another big reason why Yanu flips over to Nami. Yeah, they're shields for each other, so I feel like mm -hmm. if if one goes out, they're going to go out, and they need each other there just as a kind of you know, like the the, the physical meat shields. If you get rid of one, people are like, let's just get the other one out while we're here, just like protect right. each other socially for a bit. I think they'll be fine. Um, I'm I'm just like on the, the pre merge challenges of the season. Were those those are more physical than usual, if I recall right? None of them have like an only like there's one ending puzzle, right? Out of all of them? I feel like a lot of them ended in the use the slingshot to hit Some the kind ball. Of skill. Yeah, so yeah. so we had, you know, our immunity challenges was drag the 500 pound gecko, which was certainly oh. both a physical and teamwork but challenge. That uh, ended we in a puzzle though, right? We had uh, the ended in a puzzle. We right. did have the the put we had put together the wagon and push it through, but like mm -hmm. then we had that epic persistence puzzle that was a little bit physical and a little bit cooperation as well. I think it's more uh, physical, yeah. Then we had uh dig through the uh go into the water and then toss the bean bags onto the spiral platform. Then mm -hmm. we had dive down and release the buoys and then land the bat the balls into the targets, and then we had hit the slingshot. So we really only went puzzle heavy these first two challenges and then I got, as we'll talk about with the emergency challenge, this most recent one. Yeah, but I'll, even I'll, like per, per the persistence one, like what Dwight was saying is that that did feel so much more physical. Like yeah. it yeah. really wasn't as much about the puzzle as it was about the coordinating, but the physically just holding up the block. Yeah, everyone knew the word like a few minutes. I think it was, that was just yeah. like they so long on the puzzle. So it's like, it's intriguing how I think the, the tone of the season, I think maybe to the chagrin of like Hunter and Q later on is this season's pre merge challenges put so much effort on physicality that there was no option but for Hunter and Q. And Tim was a beast in his shot. Let's be clear. Tim sometimes was beating Hunter in some things, and people just didn't call it out. And it's like, Tim's good at these challenges. Let's mm -hmm. be very clear. So mm -hmm. I think for them, it caused them to stand out earlier than maybe they would have liked, which I think they were all they were all safe at this vote. But I think that's going to be something that can come back to bite them later is it's on everyone's minds now that they're good at challenges because they were forced to, you know, right. do these things together. Like in I, 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 my season, I think my season had like four challenges that ended in puzzles compared to their one. Yeah. Um. So it's a bit different. Like you're not looking at people's physicality as much. Um. Like also and you see the edit, like it's focusing on the Hunter and Q and Tim showdowns every damn episode. That's the so thing. People are yeah. looking at them every single episode and the players are also watching this too. Mm -hmm. So I'm very... I'm curious to see if this plays out later on. Um, if, if one goes on the immunity run, because like the way people are saying, like now, like people gonna someone's gonna break the immunity record. This challenge isn't athletic, guys. Listen, uh, fans, 
these immunity challenges are not just strength when you hit the merge, okay? Like, it's going to be some balance, intricate thing. It's going to be a puzzle. I don't think someone's going to go on immunity. Like, yes, the cast right now looks like it's just depend on Q and Hunter Tim. I don't think anyone, like, just New Era, I don't think anyone gets over three immunity wins. Like, it's not going to be like a Hunter wins six kind of thing, okay, guys? No. He's doing the challenges. He's not going to win. Like, if, if I'm wrong, at me later, if he breaks the immunity record, whatever, he's not breaking it, okay? The, the, the challenge is pretty much focused on physicality, but. That's not how post merge challenges work, okay? Well, mm -hmm. and let me throw float something out there is I believe Hunter told me openly in our preseason interview that he's like not great at balance. Like he tested it a little bit, but obviously where he's more uh you know specialized is these puzzles or these sort of hand eye coordination things to yeah, finish yeah. up in challenges, which are much more team based to your point, Dwight, that there might be especially final six, final five, where they can do these uh, bigger bills for less contestants where there might be a puzzle at the end. But Hunter might hit a dry period right now, yeah. considering it's going to be a lot of stand in one place and hold this thing up or mm -hmm. try to balance something. And not to say that like Hunter is the Mariah level in terms of hand-eye coordination, but at the same time, I think we may have possibly reached like the apex of his powers. Have you seen the preview for the next episode? The challenge? Oh, oh yeah, but it's the dog houses, right? Bermuda Triangles, yeah. So uh, he's not good at balance. Yeah, that's that's cooked. Uh, I didn't know that he wasn't good at balance. So that's unfortunate. Um, but yeah, um, what was I, I was going to say something. I forgot already. Oh my God. I'm so dumb. Well, I, I want to, maybe so you'll bring it back around because I do want to throw out a talking point here that has certainly been mentioned. I mean, there certainly has been a lot of talk in the pre-merge with the downward spiral of Yanu as to like, okay, should the three tribe format be sunsetted? Should the no flint rule be sunsetted? At this point, we are six seasons in. Dwight, as someone who has participated in Emergatory, do we need to change it up and or eliminate it altogether? Uh, change the structure of the post merge? Yes, 100%. So I, it, my opinion of this whole Emergatory thing, whatever, Emergatory, here's what I say. I am not as much of a hater of the half immune, half not at the Emergatory as some people are. I Part of me think that's okay. Mm. The thing that bothers me the most about this new air structure is the guaranteed double tribal that's coming. Mm. Because I think the players are not, if you're playing optimally, you're not allowed to really start doing things like open up your game until after a double tribal happens. If that final 12 or final 10, double tribal itself is so fucked up because on, on a 30 person tribe, everyone is still voting. So even if you integrate your world, so it's really, you can still have like the votes on your side. The split tribal of two five, two five, six, it's just purely random on who you're with. So mm. you can't really start playing aggressively until after that is over. If they move the double tribal to pre just make it to where the first tribe to win wins immunity, do a double tribal of the tribes you are on that you've been able to do with for a while. Like that's where you like force a tribe to go to tribal pre merge. Um, like even if someone's like getting constantly second, make it make him go. Mm. Um, do the double tribal pre merge, open up the game post merge. Like, let the players have a lot more votes where everyone is voting together. The double tribal is my biggest gripe with the new era structure. Mm. Um, it just closes off the game so many ways until after it happens. Like, it before, like, for, for 41, or 43, 44, it happened at 10. So you only had, like, in my opinion, the game opened up at final eight, seven, six, and five. So yeah. Four votes of, like, pure yep. survivor gameplay. Uh, now they, they moved it early to, like, final 12. But still, it's just like, why have it all? Just put it pre-merge, let them play. Put I'll say put it pre-merge. Do do the forty-one for two. Put it pre-merge. Do the merge story at twelve. Do one challenge, and then eleven onwards. Just you know, let it ride. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's that's my thought. Actually, no, they had they had a double tribal land too, didn't they? Because they had a ten on their seasons too. Yeah. Oh my they god. Did. Yeah. Do two double tribals pre-merge. Well, because well, they well because they also had the two episodes, right? They did one for the entire first round with merge story, and then the hourglass, and then the second round. And something that I think they should bring back, which is the individual immunity challenge after the merge story challenge. Yes. I agree with that too. They need mm -hmm. that to be a thing. I think just the days they, they changed the day structure to where um can I go into the can I go into the days? Please, yeah. I'm am I allowed? Okay, well yeah. if, I, if I get nuked by CBS, fine. No, no, no. But um I, mean, I, I air think air. they have bigger fish to fry this. Yeah, week. I mean yeah. they they've aired they aired days of whatever. But like 41 42, it was what they merge at they merge at 12, mm -hmm. do the challenge at 12, an exiled person, and then 14, day 14 was the vote for 12th place. Mm -hmm. Um now it's merge at 12. Vote at thirteen for six, but fourteen, but fourteen for seventh. It's, I I like the forty one for two structure more if you have more time before the vote. You have like an extra day, um, and you, it gives you time to build the individual immune challenges. Like you do the twelve to figure out which group is not safe. 
you can strive to for a day about that. Do the immunity challenge of those group that are not safe and do a vote right then. That would require a double tribal pre-merge, but I think that's better for the health of the game long term. Honestly, if you want to do two double tribals pre-merge and make them merge at 11 and just actually make them merge at zero again, from the lab, I would say, uh, then, you know, do that. Uh, which I think, like, I think it's better to make people, like, sur- the re- I think there should be, like, if you survive the pre-merge, you deserve to, like, be on the journey kind of thing. Like, that's just mm-hmm. my opinion on it. I, mean, I, I was like, that's my opinion before I played, by the way. It's not like I was going to say, Troy, you talking from a certain place. This, this <laughs> is my opinion before I played, genuinely. Uh-huh. So I want to be clear. It's not going to be documented on Reddit somewhere. Hopefully it is. But, like, I think double tribal pre-merge is better. And, just, and also a swap. I think a swap is necessary pre-merge. It had to do two tribals, two double tribals pre-merge to get it to 11 at the merge. And you can have the same schedule from day 14 onwards. I, like I said, I got, I'm like a nerd. So I was like, I have like doc ideas or like advantages I think would be balanced. I kind of get around those. And also like the scheduling, I think would be optimal. I need to go through this, but like, I like game design. I like, I really enjoy game design a lot. I think like there is a way to optimize, like how to let the players play the best while also keep it entertaining. Yeah. And it's fine balance. You don't want to swing too hard in one direction of, you know, it's just for TV, but the players don't feel like they had agency. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's where 4142 swung that direction a bit too much, where it's like you're trying to make a product, but the players just feel like, what the fuck do I do? Um, they're getting back to giving players agency a bit more in their game. I do like that, but I think there's still more they can do, in my opinion. Mm. Um, but I rambled for too long. Yeah, no, I mean, look, I Not think I, I so I, I agree with you, Dwight. I think that there's two things that I look for when it comes to twists. Is it a momentum killer? That's point number one in the sense of like, do, does it it's what you're saying about this split tribal, like knowing that the split tribal is ultimately going to come, you know, it's random, which means it's about just surviving and creating good relationships with everybody because you don't know what group of people you're going to end up with. So that's point number one. And then I think point number two is also as much as we love Sandra for the anybody but me kind of strategy. I don't want players to be so terrified that they're comatose and not willing to pull a Venus and be like, hey, like, let's try this. Let's do this. It's it's fun when one person does it, not 13. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. So, so I think that those are sort of the two things that I look for. And I do think that the split tribal has a a tends towards that. I think the small tribes tend towards that. I think the lack of food, the lack of fire, all of that tend towards, I'm just trying to protect myself. You go into the fight or flight mode. Mode. So anything that can hopefully allow players to feel like they have just a teeny bit more breathing room to be able to want to make those moves, to be able to play a little bit more proactively, that's what I want to see. Yeah, uh, and it's interesting because you could say on paper to that point of, okay, the split tribal council is where gameplay gets stymied a bit more. What I do find interesting about the double tribal council is I feel like from what we've seen, usually it's like one vote is pretty by the books and roads going to the very first one. Like the Evie boot was very unfortunate and like very clear. But then you have on the other side, like definitely the one that gets shaken up a bit more than a seer vote as a big example, where there were all these votes going around and Ricard and Shan make this big move with the extra vote to take out Nasir, who has an idol in his pocket, where if for some reason, maybe it's just that idea of like, okay, we've hit the merge now. There's smaller numbers with this configuration. Let's make a move. To your point, Liana, what you credit to the split tribal council, I credit to Mergatory personally. And look, mm-hmm. I think the person that actually went through it can contest him, but it just feels to me like this is a trend. Like this is officially not only a trend, but prevailing gameplay that we've seen through six seasons, which is just, okay, listen, I don't want to necessarily say anything because I don't want to stick my neck out too far. Do you have someone you want to get rid of? Great. We'll just sort of go with that. And it's almost always someone who has been on the bottom pre-merge and that we just kind of do a near unanimous vote on, maybe throw a few extra votes uh, other ways for like idols shot in the dark. And then kind of move on. Dwight, I completely agree with you with game structure. I think for me, the perfect pre-merge would be like, you know, whether you do a swap or not, four regular episodes. Episode five, make it a double tribal council. Make it a one tribe wins and then the other tribe go. A, that gives a chance for tribes to actually go to tribal council in the pre-merge, which we definitely have struggled with the past couple seasons of Nami, Bello, these tribes had never voted until they end up reaching the merge. Uh, And then two, like, Yes, I understand wanting to put a double round in there later just in case you get a Bruce situation or a Jackson situation and you have to do a double boot anyway. This is only, what, like a couple rounds before you do a double boot anyway. So, like, it feels like this is extending the pre-merge to get more people to vote. Then you go into mergatory, and I think you do the 41-42 structure. I could understand that there is appeal in, like, having people 
meet on a beach and talk with each other and having a day to get sort of feel each other out before you end up getting into the challenge. But I would imagine if I was in that spot, to Liana's point, I would just kind of be waiting of like, great, I'm going to vibe with these people. I'm going to wait until I see if this person's actually safe or not before I can actually throw a name out. So I say, bring them to the challenge on day thir day 12, day 13, and say like, drop your buffs. The mergatory challenge is happening now. Do the draw. Make that pool open immediately at the merge. So then you get two days to basically talk things through. You can have that individual immunity challenge because I also feel like, badly for the people in 43 who 46 were eliminated because like yeah you didn't have the right group for this particular challenge give them another chance to stand on their own two feet perhaps yeah. quite literally mm -hmm. and win immunity for yourself and then move forward from there it's these small tweaks where like if mergatory feels like a must if jeff feels like this is so thematic to the new era that it must be a staple of it there's ways that we can work into it to not make it seem like we are just walking into a 13 person mergatory okay there's maybe three people that can go based on what usually happens yeah. mm -hmm. all right well let's start talking about the person that unfortunately did go out at mergatory let's talk about mariah here now mariah certainly a very fun person to talk about in the pre-merge certainly rob and i had some question marks about her as she was going on to the quote-unquote more normal vibe tribe of sega as one of the quirkier personalities liana how did that play into your own predictions for how Mo would do in the preseason? Okay, so I did have Mo going pre-jury. And I said that Mo, uh, well, Mariah, I didn't I didn't know we were going with Mo, okay? So Mariah attempts to connect with her tribe mates over D&D &D and brewing beer, but unfortunately her tribe mates don't share the same hobbies. In the first immunity challenge of the season, she is assigned the puzzle, but second guesses herself and crumbles under pressure. Due to her lack of social connections and the puzzle flop, Mariah wipes out in the first tribal council and is the first boot of the season. Oh, that, oh, I know. Out. I'm very explicit about this. Bad call. Anyway, imagine if it's co wrong and the brains tribe had gone first and Aubrey was the first <laughs> boot. It's like that, but not. Okay. I said her ally was Ben and her enemy was subtle influence. <laughs> had me in the first half, not going to lie. Yeah, that was something that she told me in her preseason interview that yeah. she had mastered the art of subtle influence yes. from her work in politics, which I don't think ever came up surprisingly. She didn't do a like, as a person in politics, this is how you work your way around it. Uh, but she had a lot of other great confessionals. I feel like Mariah has kind of like her airtime was kind of odd. You know, she had the DS can't jump random tidbit back in episode three. But I always loved her when she went to confessionals. Something about when she talked about how uh, when she read the tree mail, her heart sank much like the dense gravity in her body. Like she has such a way with words. I really do love her. Mm -hmm. That was good. The other so one too was uh, like the, the, um, I can't believe men are just listing or like they're just listing song titles and I'm like super into it. That confessional I feel like was also very good. Yeah, saying names, I think he said. <laughs> yeah. Uh so I had higher prospects. I jumped a little bit to a greater height for Mariah. I did have her making the jury. I said that due to her being quirkier than her tri mates, she starts on the outs of Sega, but going undefeated pre-merge keeps hope alive. Uh, yeah, I think I talked about this with Jem last week that I had Sega winning every challenge. She bonds with Ben over Lord of the Rings, forming the Hobbit Alliance alongside Maria because they're the three shortest Sega people. Um, despite her wipeout win, we'll see her promised preseason klutziness come to fruition. She'll struggle to walk across balance beams, taking quite a few face plants in the water, which, to be fair, won her a whole other reality show. She'll make and put too much stock in a red hair, don't care alliance with Kenzie, which is not very reciprocated. The nagging voice in her head will be tested when she goes on a journey. Her gut has her deciding to play, which loses her vote. And after the Sega culling begins post-merge, Mariah goes out over her fellow hobbits, perceived as the brains of the group due to her nerdiness and fandom. Her closest allies were Ben and Maria, and her enemy was her inner ear. Oh, because of balance. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, Got it. I don't know. It could just be maybe she doesn't <laughs> like it. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> she got an ear infection. Um, Talk about Ko Rong. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. I, I'm I'm surprised he had Sega winning all of them. Like you really felt like they were gonna do well. I mean, I th I think for me, I'd seen that Yanu obviously had fallen apart uh, in those first yes. two challenges, and Nami oh. 
Like, I would have loved to see them crush the rest of the pre-mage, but for me, I was like, the bottom has to drop out at some mm -hmm. point. This tribe is just way too much of a mishmash of personalities that they'll eventually lose one. Sega was, like, again, by far the most copacetic, even within those first few days, that I thought, okay, they seem to be at least pretty good at everything. There's a chance that they could lose. They came in second in those two challenges that, uh, you know, I watched them do. But I thought, okay, they're the most stable tribe. And I think considering the very unstable elements across the other two tribes, stability would win out here. Fair. Okay. So are you going to give me the win, Dwight? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Q, being so forward. Yeah, I'm taking... I'm, I, was, I was thinking Venus, but okay. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. I'm trying to stick... So... I, I am... Uh, the, the small thing that gets me there is Mike said that she gets taken out for being the brains of the Alliance, which kind of was the reason she was like just perceived as you know the strategist of the Sega group, even though she was on the bottom, but she didn't say it's a, a tribal at least. Hmm. I'm gonna go with Mike on this one. Aww. I think Mike got it a bit closer <laughs> yeah. than uh than you did. That's so. a nat 20. <laughs> okay, I'm giving it to Liania now. Yay! That. <laughs> nat one. Remember, inside thoughts, Mike. <laughs> no, <laughs> never. <laughs> I'm like Venus. Like, would it be an entertaining podcast if I kept things inside? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my god. Okay, well, uh speaking of not keeping things inside. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird transition. Uh we're going to let's play our game. I thought you were just going to projectile vomit all over your screen <laughs> when you said oh, that. God. <laughs> I don't know why that's, again, the first thing you thought of, but okay. Uh, all right. So what are we doing today? We are going to Casuals Corner. I went to the Survivor Facebook page because it's about time we do a checkup to see how the Casuals are feeling about the season. <laughs> are they sharing similar opinions? Oh, Jesus. Uh, how do they feel about how everything is going? <laughs> so I will read four comments. Three of them are real. One of them I wrote. And your goal is to guess which one I wrote. So we'll go back and forth between the two of you and answer some questions. Maybe be more confused. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. But first, uh, I will I'm kick I will kick things off with a comment that was actually... So I don't know if Jordan Kalish is like checking the Facebook page like every week. Anyway, he sent me screenshots this week from some comments <laughs> Like unprompted? <laughs> yeah, unprompted, but he didn't even know we were doing Casual Corner. Oh, I think Jordan Kalish is peeping on our text conversations, Liana. <laughs> I think he might be. <laughs> anyway, so he sent me you one. You can't spell Jordan Kalish without NSA. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a hacker, a hacker man. <laughs> okay, so he sent me one uh, from Sifu, a, pr a new father, by the way. Mm. Um, and this is what Sifu wrote. Sifu, in all caps, is ready rock with the merge. What? <laughs> so this is like Sifu's Wait, official he... fan page? No, no, no. It's him. No. I mean, it's him. No, I Sifu think. talks in the third person on Instagram yes. comments. All right. So, well, we so always recall Sifu. who voted for Sifu. Right. So Sifu is ready rock with the merge. Oh, and then there's a check mark, check mark, check mark emoji, um, if that's important. Is he so, trying to show that he's triply verified? I don't know. Anyway, so Sifu's ready to rock, and so are we. But did he say two? He Wait. said ready rock. Yeah, he didn't yeah. say ready to rock. He said he Sifu said is ready. ready rock with the merge. Okay. I mean, we do re recall, right, his uh, preseason battle of the bands alongside Ben. So maybe he's trying to, like, undercut him, try to take his own language from him. <laughs> maybe. Or just, like, how do we get in a band together? Can you imagine, like, Ben, J. Maya, Sifu all I'm performing here for together? It, honestly. Do it. I'm just Do imagining Sifu's child sitting in a high chair the way he was sitting in the ocean that one time in the background. That we're, <laughs> we we can't stop thinking there. about that. <laughs> oh, I forgot that happened. That's so funny. Oh, that image is burned into my brain. I love it. Okay, let's talk about the woman of the hour, our eliminated contestant, Mariah. So, Mike, we're going to start with you. Here are four comments. One I wrote, three are real. You have to guess which one I wrote. Comment A, not sure what they all had against Mo, except that she was a super fan. Valid. B, who was Mo? Oh, no. C, 
Mariah or Liz needs to go. They both look the same and we only need one. Oh. Or D. Mo should have jumped ship from Sega. Dot dot dot. Oh wait. Dot dot dot. Laugh emoji. Laugh emoji. Laugh emoji. Oh, see, D feels so clever. That part of me feels like you <laughs> wrote it, but like I don't want to give discredit the casuals mm. too much. So A was what was A again? Not sure what they all had against Mo, except that she was a super fan. Okay, that feels logical enough and reasonable enough, and also mm. like not cheeky enough to be a real one. So it comes down to B and C, which makes sense because these are two comments about Mariah and Liz looking alike. I'm going to say C. C felt a bit too much of a complex second structure. Okay. So I, when I read that one, I thought I'd written it because <laughs> it sounds like something I would have written, 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 but no, it was D. Oh, Mo wow. Jump oh. Chip from Sega. So clever, clever. Wow. Look at me. <laughs> I, uh, that's also a, a wild thing about this wild season is like, remember the fact that they cast two people that look very much alike. <laughs> Honestly, I, I was wishing they were final two. I, I, I feel scammed. I feel very sad that they couldn't work together. Like Mariah Same. told me that it seemed like she was much more into Ben Liz was than mm -hmm. she was into her. So it was clear that unfortunately all their loving conversations during like the three hours it took the Pezzeristans challenge about their socks just was done. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like, at least we got that moment, you know, I'm with so them on the they, benches. Yeah, the editors giving us that. That was, that was great. Yeah. They're I having fun. That. I love that. Okay. We're going to stick with Mo. And uh, I think you'll get the theme of this question as I go through the comments. And Dwight, this one is going to be for you. Oh, God. A, I'm sad she's not in no Mo. Tonight on Survivor, if you don't vote Mo, it's you no Mo. <laughs> Wait, this is all one comment? No, no, no. These are all oh, okay. different. That oh, was okay. A. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, A, a is. Sorry, yes. A is, I'm sad she's not in no Mo. B is, tonight on Survivor, if you don't vote Mo, it's you no Mo. C, Mo sealed her own fate, dot, dot, dot. She could, she should have kept her Mo, mouth shut. M-O dash U-T-H, like oh, mouth, okay. but okay. Mo, mouth. Mo-oth. Mo moth. Mo 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 her moeth shut. <laughs> or D, sad Mo's gone, but Mo money, Mo problems. <laughs> okay. C and D sound like casuals for sure, I feel. Maybe. I say, say A and B again. Okay, so A is, I'm sad she's not in no Mo. And B is tonight on Survivor. If you don't vote Mo, it's you no Mo. Okay, I was gonna say B, but B just sounds so out there. Like, actually, someone wrote that on like on Facebook or something. So, oh my god! Actually, is it is it is it C? I don't know. We'll see again. C is Mo sealed her own fate. Dot dot dot. Should have kept her Mo Uth shut. Mo Uth. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say B was something that you wrote. Okay, so that's incorrect. I no. wrote D. Sad Mo's gone, but Mo money, Mo problems. <laughs> yeah, which makes it that applies more so to Liz than Mo. Yeah, I, I, listen, I thought someone on Facebook had hey, another Liz Mo joke. I, I, whoops. Yeah, look, <laughs> it's a disaster. That was also one of my uh, oh, under the radar Liz moments of the episode is when she Hunter immediately finds out and she just comes ambling around with the grandma sweater. <laughs> oh my god there was another liz moment where she was like it was when hunter takes off to go get the idol and she's like why are we running yeah <laughs> yes. yeah well because hunter is like hooray the merch Whee! Whee! <laughs> the beach. doesn't come back <laughs> <laughs> and like no one was suspicious that he just like takes off that's and so that's strange like, to me like, i'm just like what <laughs> He's just so excited. He just ran away. He ran to a different island. Yeah. But just imagine that. Like, imagine if you're hosting a surprise party. And not the person being surprised, but if someone who's a part of the party goes, surprise, and then they just hey. run out of the house and don't come back for, like, three hours. What is that saying? Yeah. And then comes back and just, like, sits on the steps. <laughs> like, yeah. okay. I, I got it. I listen. I tired myself out. Okay. I ran that whole way. <laughs> And it's like I run back right afterwards. She's like, "Oh, I got the energy again. Got to go yeah. back." Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about Venus. So, mm. Mike, this question is for you. 
Comment A. I liked Venus. She was a threat to the dummies. B. Venus got to go to. <laughs> I like her, but then I like soda and I voted for Biden. <laughs> Did right, anyone... I didn't realize that we had to reveal our okay. voter records on <laughs> the Survivor Before? Band. <laughs> I, don't, I, like, I don't understand like, the logic of that. Whoa, what oh, could it be that because Venus is Canadian, they want to show like, mm. but I'm American. I voted for Biden. <laughs> So do you think soda refers to the drink, not the person then? Like I'm American mm -hmm. and I love Waffle House and I voted for Biden. You know like, what? Those are the three things um... that get linked with each other. <laughs> okay. So that was comment C. Comment D. Anyone notice Venus put on a purple tank top to schmooze with the Yanni tribe? A little too obvious. Oh, I love the Yanni tribe. <laughs> Yeah. Not Yanni. Not, Yanni. Not that soft Greek music. All right. So <laughs> Yanni tribe. I feel like Yanni tribe is real. Then we have I'm American. I like soda and yeah. Biden. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I did you write C? I think you wrote C. I did not write C. Was it like a B? You write B? I wrote B. Yeah. Venus guts to go to. <laughs> it just popped into my head and I was like, this is so dumb. We're going to keep this. <laughs> okay, so it's a 0-0 zero, zero score so far. Let's see if Dwight can get the first point on the board. So, all right. So we're not going to be talking about one specific player. We're going to be talking about some general thoughts about the other players of the season. So here are your comments, Dwight. A, Hunter is the hardest worker there. He's the best so far. He knows how to play Survivor. That's on Facebook. Yep. Okay. <laughs> B, lol, I love Q. For a athlete, he sucks at challenges, but he makes me laugh. C, Tiki Man has a better social game than Tim. Ooh. <laughs> or... D, I think they should all vote off Elsbeth since she keeps interrupting all their convos. <laughs> I want to say D so bad, but I, I think know. that's real. Elsbeth is freaking peeping her head in saying, what y'all talking about? <laughs> yeah, I that one where I... she like popped up, like she was like up when there was a conversation happening. It's like, what are you doing here? Go away. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually, it's A or D. I don't know which one. Um... So I was convinced A was real, but now A sounds so straightforward, it might be fake. Um, hmm. Is D real? Is, is D real? I'm so upset if D is actually real. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say A is what you wrote. It is not A. D is real. Okay. C is the one that I wrote about Tiki ah. Man having See, a better social. That's game the thing. Him. You know, these Elspeth advertisements are so obtrusive that the <laughs> casuals the ca are picking up on oh, them. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yes. They're mostly just complaining about how loud the music is. The fact that they managed to notice this, like, okay, it's too much. Too much. Okay, Mike, we're going to go back to you. Uh, so, this uh, group of comments I just have titled Who? So oh, okay. let's figure this out together. Comment A, Marie said she was pregnant. Why we she allowed to compete? Not eating and getting hurt during a challenge <laughs> or a huge risk. What? Huh? When? Who said what? <laughs> Who said that? Okay, comment A, Marie said she was pregnant. Why we she allowed to compete? Not eating and getting hurt during a challenge are a huge risk. There's so did, many things. Is there a were... secret scene I didn't that only did I... they had access to where someone took a pregnancy test? <laughs> <laughs> Who? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, that was A. <laughs> so let's so pause that for a sec. Oh god. <laughs> All right, comment B. The realtor should have went home. Okay. Referring, oh, to, okay, referring to Q, uh, I guess good I on them for paying attention to the lower thirds and seeing that he's a real estate agent. I know. And also, it's literally the easiest name to remember. It's one letter. It's Q. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> Fine. The real letter, <laughs> if you want. Um, okay. C. Libby is Miss Moneybags. Send her home first. Libby! Libby! I mean, to be fair, Liz is probably short for Elizabeth. Or, wait, could Liz be short for Elsbeth? Elsbeth. Don't even start. <laughs> oh, no. 
Elsbeth is Liz. <laughs> the 19th <laughs> contestant on this season. <laughs> no, that's what happens is they decided, listen, uh, CBS is a pioneer in technology. They took the character of Elsbeth, downloaded her into like a clone body that's an offshoot of Mariah. They're like, just take it and tweak it a little bit so that people won't notice. And that's what Liz is. Yeah. Has AI gone too far? <laughs> Okay, uh, that was okay. So let's see. D. Wish Jess played her idol. So glad no one is prancing around in underwear. Okay. Oh wait. Okay. So, so Jess means Jem. I'm doing some translation here. Okay. Wish that Jem played her idol. Now they say I'm glad no one's prancing around in their underwear. Yeah. Is that to imply that if Jem did play her <laughs> idol and stayed, that she would be like so chaste? that she would insist on not wearing anything to expose the underwear because the other option was ben and i guess ben ben was wearing like cut off denim shorts i noticed in this episode but i don't think he was wearing underwear all the time oh i never nude um well i think that so it says wish jess played her idol so i think in the universe where jess plays just a gem jess whatever plays her idol they yeah, because remember don't jess want... did play an idol it just was not a real one <laughs> Yeah, they still don't want people prancing around in underwear. So oh, I so don't two think separate, that... Two separate thoughts. Correct, but same comment. Okay, so we have... We have Jess Gem Idol. We've mm -hmm. got Libby. Yeah. A was... Marie saying Marie she was surprise, pregnant. Marie's surprise pregnancy. And Correct. B and is realtor. the realtor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm between B and C once more in the middle of the sandwich. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with B. You were close. It was C. Ah! Was the correct answer. Yes, Libby is Miss Moneybags. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, do people pull the name Libby out nowadays in 2024? I don't know. No. <laughs> no, they don't. I was like, what name is like Liz? <laughs> Lib? <laughs> Lisa. Just go with Lisa. Yeah, do I don't they know. Say, do they say better, uh, yeah. Libby should go? I voted for Biden. Yeah. Yeah, Libby, yeah, Libby should go. I love soda. I voted for Biden. I love sweet tea. I voted for Biden. Okay. All right. We're uh, we're sticking in the same confusing category. Oh, God. White yes, game. yes. <laughs> All right. So here are your comments. A, I've got three winners. Tim, Trayvon, and Hunter. Love these guys. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Comment A. That was comment A. <laughs> Check, please. Uh, <laughs> comment B. She reminds me of AOS. She might be smarter than AOS. You mean AO are they AOC. AOC with iOS? Did they mix them together? <laughs> Reading you what I saw. <laughs> uh, comment C. I forgot to watch it. You was voted off? <laughs> There are 26 <laughs> letters in the alphabet. I'm looking at my keyboard now. Q and U have a difference of five letters between them. You just heard it wrong every single time. You know, don't blame them. I mean, or if I were going in there, I would want to go by the nickname U. Also, that's the the fault. also, Q wasn't voted off. Another thing. That's just factually incorrect. Well, that was a question because they forgot, oh, to, they watch forgot to watch. So they so hope that U was, was voted gone. off? Question mark. But maybe it's like uh, in T9 texting. <laughs> Is <laughs> Q and U, are those the same button? I don't remember. <laughs> yes, they're on um, their Motorola Razors trying correct. to go into the Survivor Facebook page and figure out what happened. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. Uh, mm. All right. So yes. So Dwight, <laughs> back to you. Those are your comments. So we've got oh, the three winners one? comment. We've got AOS. You was voted off. Oh wait, D. I need to read you D. Obviously, yes. uh, comment D is Seven Up made the merge. That's cute. Cute. That, but it should be several up. Several up. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> several, I'll go. Yeah. We'll edit that. Several up made the merge. <laughs> Uh, uh. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go C. C. Okay, so no, it was D. I it wrote. Was, I thought it was too oh, obvious. Seven up. Ah. Seven up. Because also, it's it's like Libby. Who talks about Seven Up nowadays? Yeah, fair. Yeah. 
Okay, I did have a look. Okay, so you know when you can tell in a right like when someone's writing a sitcom, okay, or like a TV mm -hmm. show, and you're like, okay, in the writer's room, what did that conversation look like about what exactly the joke was going to be? That was me being like, Coca-Cola, Diet Coke, Pepsi, and I landed on 7-Up as up. being, I think, the optimal drink. I don't know if I was debating between that and Fanta as an option, but <laughs> we landed on 7-Up. Okay, last two questions. Still zero zero. We'll get eventually, game. Mike. Don't there worry. We go. It's like a soccer game. game. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, Mike. We're gonna go back to you. So the casuals, not only did they raise questions, they're also asking questions. Okay, okay. so these okay. are all questions that the casuals had. A, who built those steps at camp? Seems fishy. B. Been watching since season one. Where are all the bug bites that they should have? C. Has anyone noticed that the tribes are dressed in the same color as their buff? Or question D. My question is, there are daily multiple earthquakes affecting the island and surrounding islands. Nothing has ever been said about any of them. I would like Jeff to mention how it affects the players. I look at the earthquake map. Every day. And I voted for Biden. And I voted for Biden. <laughs> I love 7-Up. <laughs> oh, man. I Also, I love that that's not a question. Like, that is just incredible writing. So if it's for you, to you, absolute kudos. They said, I have a question. Proceeded to write several sentences that did not have a question mark contained. Well formatted. <laughs> well formatted. So then we have... Uh, a bunch of obvious things that we know, though, again, last week proved that not all super fans are necessarily paying attention to the nitty gritty of the details. Everyone dressed like, see, I would say that like, oh, everyone's dressed like their buffs, but we saw with like Venus's purple top with mm -hmm. the Yanni tribe that that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Can you remind me of A and B again? A was who built those steps at camp? Seems fishy. Mm -hmm. And B is, I've been watching it since season one. Where are all the bug bites that they should have? I'm going to go with B for bug bites. It was A. No! That's at camp. <laughs> Seems fishy. Seems fishy. fishy. Seems fishy. I'm so glad that the earth. I wonder how that earthquake person felt about the recent one that hit the tri state area on Friday. I, that's why I thought it right? was D. I was like, there's no way like, you found an earthquake comment. So that's so topical. Can you know, imagine right? they wrote on the Survivor excited. Facebook page? Did anyone else feel that earthquake? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first place I went. <laughs> I okay, I'm in New York. I didn't feel a damn thing. Like, am really? I just No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't feel anything either. And uh, supposedly, we got it here. So, oh, yeah, I don't I know. Like, we're just like. <laughs> Because like, I, I, was I, was, I was just imagining you in the lab with like all this glassware shattering. I was in a meeting, so I just like mm. to think that I, I was just so focused, working so hard in the meeting that like mm. I didn't notice. I but. had no such excuse. I was just on my computer, and like my mom and dad just text me, just like, "Are you okay?" I'm just like, "Yeah, yes." Yeah. Like, why? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Like, why are you, why are you asking? So are you I, asking? I was sitting in this very room, and I wasn't recording, but I, the microphone kept jostling back and forth. Oh. And I'm like, oh, I guess the washing machine's going pretty hard. And I didn't realize it was an earthquake until a few minutes afterwards. Yeah. Okay. So this is our last question. <laughs> I got We this. have a riveting score of zero, zero. Still. I can't lose. You can't true, lose. True. Exactly. Dwight, you can't lose. So here is, and now your topic is just potpourri. Okay. So just an assortment of random things that the casuals have opinions on. Love, love that. Okay, comment A. They could have given the no winners at least a dry biscuit for making it to the merge. <laughs> <laughs> that was comment A. <laughs> comment B. Enough with the chit chat already. Can we please play a game? Eat a crocodile? Something? Anything? <laughs> One of those things is not like eat, eat a crocodile. <laughs> Is this is like cancel Christmas? Is this a phrase? <laughs> Once again, no. <laughs> okay, so that's B. C. I'm building a life-size replica of the Fijian beach out of coconuts in my backyard. <laughs> or D. And I will I will say, because I don't know how to read this appropriately, but this is in all caps. The whole thing in all caps. Survivor just not like it used to be. I record all shows and fast forward the majority of them. Need more Boston Rob days. And then there's the like the little red cheek emoji that's like, ah. 
the very end. That, that, Blue Kami so sleeping. <laughs> yeah, if so you wrote Blue that Kami. one, I swear. <laughs> what, what was A again? A was they could have given the no winners at least a dry biscuit for making it to the merge. All right, what was C? C was I'm building a life size replica of the Fijian beach out of coconuts in my backyard. What was B? <laughs> <laughs> B was enough with the chit chat already. Can we please play a game? Eat a crocodile, something, anything. I'm going to say C. That is correct. Yeah! We did it. Our first point of the game goes to Dwight, and that means that Dwight is the winner. <laughs> One zero. It was, it, was, it was neck and neck like that puzzle. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, yes, that one, that one was fake. The rest were real. So congratulations, Dwight, the champion Yay. of our casuals corner. I'm actually Wait, surprised, point. Liana, there wasn't a like Banu specific category because I would imagine they had so many thoughts on him. They, they were probably still talking about him two weeks later. Surprisingly, that he is. No, I was actually quite shocked um, because there are most contestants that have a, such a, such a big impact on people. They persist, right? Like they'll yeah. still be showing up in comments, but even looking through the other comments, cause I pull a ton, right. And then mm -hmm. I organize them based on categories. And even in, I had one category that I didn't end up using that were essentially like a million opinions in one comment. So for example, there was like, um, Ben and his musical persona are getting redundant. Soda is a knockoff Marianne. Tevin thinks he's running the show. Liz literally is there acting like she doesn't even need the money. Even in those, that was one comment. Even in all of those, Banu, nowhere. So I don't know. I would be very interested. I assume Kalish is reading the comments every week. So maybe he can go back and say, like, what was the opinion on Banu? Because, yeah, he did not show up really anywhere. That's so interesting. In general, how did, because it seems like, I was expecting just a, a heap of negativity on them, but it sounds like they're they're like adapting to the quirkiness of these contestants. I feel like Liana was choosing ones that were there <laughs> to show. I've looked, yeah. Yeah, so do I get to second point? Um, <laughs> so here's the other category I didn't end up using, which was like general thoughts on the cast. So we'll just go very quick fire on this one. Uh, worst cast of all time. I'm just watching for the scenery. Cast is not very likable. Cast is super annoying. I don't want to be stuck with them. Um, something's missing. The players don't have the right personalities for the show. Cast better people. The season does not rock. God, I <laughs> do not like this season. <gasps> At all. The fans are so like this cast is so entertaining. Like I, I don't agree. Get it. Oh, I love it. Is, I love yeah. this cast. We we, so we ran much. through so many things. Even something like, you know, uh Q saying like, well, farewell, buff. It's been great. And Tiffany's like, fuck no, it hasn't. And then just like <laughs> yeets it into the fire. Like it's just these it, this is a very, I think, underratedly funny season. It's tough because mm -hmm. there's like again a lot of charged emotions behind the contestants and the fans and obviously there was a lot of stuff involved with the yanu tribe in particular early on but even something like one group emergatory knowing how stacked things are against them that they run through all of their heights in such a jovial fashion it's just such a it's fun small. energy to me yeah they're having fun with yeah. it also like this cast like 90 minutes for 45 they planned around with twist you're we're getting character moments in 46 because of the 90 minutes because they didn't plan for it and I think it's it's showing a lot more of the players, which some maybe the casuals can't handle seeing people that are emotional sometimes or playing with a bit more like ferocity, which I I like seeing all these small things. And I don't know, the casuals are just being the casuals and you know, yeah. everything's miserable, everything sucks about the new era, blah 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 blah. The casting sucks, the game sucks, the fan, the cast better people, cast real players, blah, 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 blah. yeah, like oh my god, shut up. Um yeah, it, it's tough because, like, I do think this is a, a, a pretty polarizing cast. Like, I do think because of the new era, because the structure has been so similarly ingrained, especially the past few yeah, seasons, yeah. like, yeah. they live and die by their cast. And so this group of players, I could very much see, okay, either you are sort of glomming onto, I'm not really vibing with anybody right now, so there's not really anyone I'm attaching my emotions to, or you're like, I'm here for the mess. These people are clearly absolutely wackadoo, and one of these wackadoos is going to win. I think all of us are kind of in the latter category, but I don't necessarily be bemoan anyone who's in the former category as well. I mean, someone like something like 44 kind of had a similar trajectory to it, but also kind of lived and died by the likability of its cast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Completely agree. All right. So winner, winner, chicken dinner, Dwight, we're going to continue 
on your spotlight laden path here as always you get the chance to highlight a charity or cause that is important to you for the listeners to find out about what would you like to spotlight here oh god uh i think i said what did i say last time i think i said thank you oh now time. you have to make me do research all right i'll try I'll, i think see. i said thank you last time Jill's hospital. i um, believe you did as well um ooh, charity or cause i was gonna say this. i almost said that again oh uh, yep um, saint jude children research hospital was the last one you did yeah, um, trying to think of something another Memphis, really, you know, like I said, Memphis born race, so I'll try and uh, resurrect for Memphis. Um, uh, oh god, um, wait, what is it called? Um, it is, I'm trying to remember what it's called. Um, that's that's that is local. Um, I mean, you could always uh, do a local charity and then say, find one in your area if it's applicable. Yeah, I think, mm-hmm. are they local as well? Because I know Ronald McDonald House in Memphis, I think it's still related to St. Jude, though. Um, but yeah, Ronald McDonald House, like, they're very good. Um, like well, they have urban. local ones also. Like, we have yeah. a local one here as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, they find a local one. They're, they're very good. Um, because I know people who, you know, use them, like, been benefited from them before. So, like, Ronald McDonald House is a really good organization as well. Um, so, yeah, definitely look into that. Find a local, local one for you and say donate, support in some way that you can. Should the merch feast be sponsored by McDonald's? Um, no. I don't want to sit into the ocean and, you know, <laughs> for hours. I don't need that. No. no. Sorry. Applebee's, though? We'll take it. Okay. Do, do that again. <laughs> so, the, here's a question, actually. Where is the sanctuary? Um, Where good things happen? We haven't seen it yet oh this gosh. season. I, now The merch feast has now kind of happened just somewhere away from camp. Yeah, the merch piece is like it's on the same because like they had their merch before you had ours. It's literally just down the beach, like yeah, B- Baca or not Baca, whatever island this is for them. It's the same as Baca Beach. It's just one long beach, and they just said, "Yeah, walk down, y'all turn here. The rest of y'all keep going, losers." So it's just like, okay, um, I'm not sure what the sanctuary is. I don't. Yeah, no, I didn't. Yeah, I, I it's on some island somewhere, but uh, this season. Don't need it, apparently. Bad things have happened. We don't need it. No good uh, things. You deserve nothing. Sanctuaries turned into where bad things happen. <laughs> right, maybe we'll see maybe we'll see with the individual in, like rewards. Probably. Yeah, like, we'll, we'll have to imagine. imagine. Well, it's interesting because last season they had the merge feast at the sanctuary. So right. I don't know, maybe they were still cleaning it up from the rager that the women mm-hmm. had there during boys' night. <laughs> I'm not sure, but they also had it in the next episode as well, where the winning group that still had to go to tribal council went to the sanctuary before they went off to their camp. So it might appear next season or like the sanctuary may have low-key taken the season off. Listen, everyone needs a break. Okay. The sanctuary, just give it some time. It was overworked last season. Okay. Just it'll be time again. Maybe they got sued. Like, is there a the sanctuary, like a restaurant or like a hotel? Why, okay. or like a Why would they get sued in between filming of 45 <laughs> and 46? Did someone fly out and be like, Act- I heard what you were doing out here. Stop this right now. Like, yeah. what? I could only get a flight in late May and early June. <laughs> you already filmed the season? All right. Well, you can keep it for that one. But swear to God. But after that. <laughs> that you're done. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> Well, oh Dwight, you are not getting a season assist anytime soon from either coming on the B&B or putting out all the great content that you do. This was so much fun, as per usual. You are streaming up a storm uh, on the weekly. You talk about loving game structure. I think you have really brought a new game into, I know, the, both the lives of Liana and myself, as well as a lot of people there with Blood on the Clock Tower, which has had several Survivor-based guests. Uh, why don't several. you want to... Yeah, exactly. You want to plug it in anything else you're doing? Yeah, so yeah, doing clock blood and clock tower streams basically every Saturday at this point. Um, I'm I was talking to Chad about. I think I'm gonna do like every Saturday except for one a month. So I'll do like three out of four in a month because I have a lot of a lot more interest in it, which I didn't expect. But yeah, I've been really loving that. It's like social deduction mafia esque, but like on steroids. I love it. I love running the game. Hopefully, y'all have been having fun with it too. But yeah, doing that on Twitch at doing more is the handle. Doing and then more my last name. The only creative mode in my body took me to make that. Like, I have nothing else creative. That took me, like, a day and a half to think of. So, nothing else from me. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I don't really do anything else. Twitter, I guess. I don't – Dwight more on Twitter. I don't – Instagram, if you follow me there, sorry. I don't post. LOL. Uh, that's it. That's all I do. Mainly Twitch, though. Follow me on Twitch. I like I like streaming. It's fun. All right. Liana, after a week off, you are back into your usual rotation. What would you like to plug? 
Yes, back in the game. Puli has been really sick, so we haven't recorded Mass Singer yet. So at some point, we'll get around to that. We might get a double episode next week. We'll see, depending on how he's feeling. But a Drag Race is back in full swing. We're going to be talking about episode 14. I can't believe we are almost done with the season. I, I don't even know. Anyway, so check that out on the Drag Race feed. And then you can follow me on Twitter at Liana RHAP. A very Q focused episode. A lot of Q. A lot of Q. And you can Wait, follow me on Drag Race. Oh, yep. yeah. <laughs> there is simultaneously a, just Q, like the letter Q. So both a Q on Survivor and Drag Race at the same time. It's hilarious to see the crossover because some be, someone like on the Survivor Reddit will comment like Q, blah, blah, blah. And someone will reply to it referring to the Drag Race Q. It's so fun. It's and also Q, is, Q had a storyline throughout the Drag Race season where like she would lose things and she would kind of have like, why does my path have to be the hardest path kind of confessionals? Yep. yep. <laughs> You're yeah, lying. Sure. That's so, so funny. That's so good. <laughs> so you can follow me at a Mike Bloom type. As mentioned before, I got the chance to speak with Mariah, which was a lot of fun. Again, I, I absolutely love just getting sound bites from her. And she gave a lot of perspective as to her approach and Sega's approach to this unification until the last minute reveal of the truth at tribal council. Uh, she gets to the bottom of this whole jumping fiasco that happened with her. So I'm glad I was able to jump in and have a chat with her. Also talked with uh, the latest team eliminated from the amazing race, which was a very fun conversation and did a podcast as well with uh season 27 runner up, Justin. And then, uh, Posher recaps is done and dusted uh, down the hatch is going to keep going for one more week before we take a little bit of a goddess to get our stuff back in gear. Uh, last thing I'll plug is that the challenge all stars season four is coming to Paramount plus I have an interview coming out tomorrow on the day we're recording this with a pretty big name from the season. So if you're a challenge fan, you can check that out. All the stuff that I advertise on social media at a Mike Bloom type. Of course, you can send us any game ideas that you have. No idea will be shirked whatsoever. We will not react a la everyone to Venus suggesting Charlie. We are welcome and open to any game ideas you have. RHAPBNB at gmail.com or hashtag RHAPBNB on social media. Next week, Leon and I will be back to break down the double tribal council. We will see our last pre-juror and our first juror crowned within the same episode. Uh, we shall see... What that might entail, it looks like the Segas might be in trouble. Looks like Venus might be in trouble if she'll go the way of Caleb of survive the night, but not the next episode. We'll see, though. Uh, you know, maybe now that these people finally feel like they have room to play, they could start making some wild moves happen. No matter what, we'll be breaking it all down. Guess TBA still trying to put some gears into motion, but no matter what, we'll be back playing some games and breaking it all down. A special thanks to the entire RHAP team behind the scenes for letting this podcast be uh, packaged so beautifully for your eyes and ears. And Will from America for his fantastic theme song. Next week, we'll go to episode several and break down the next phase of the game. Until next time, everybody, we'll check you out at your next day.